Hey everybody, I'm Stefan the Only Nerd and in this video I'm gonna show you how to use this to make something like this. Let's go! First of all, what is blue stuff? Blue stuff is a thermoplastic molding material that you can use by simply heating it up and pressing a subject of your choice into it. And when it has cooled down, you can put whichever epoxy putty or resin that you prefer into the mold. And when you're done, you can just redo it with another piece. It's totally reusable. It sounds very easy and it really is. I'll go through the process step by step and show you the different ways to use blue stuff. Oh yeah, blue stuff is a product made by Green Stuff World. But there is also other thermoplastic molding materials out there. Like this one, called Oyomaru. This is usually a bit cheaper, but it should be all the same. And in this video I'll use both. Out of the box it's rubbery to the feel and it's really sturdy. But to use it as a mold we need to soften it up. So I'm going to put it in some boiling hot water. I'm going to use a water boiler. But you can also put a pot on the oven or just heating up the water in a microwave. Pour it in a suitable cup and toss the blue stuff in there. And now we'll wait about 3 minutes. And life is short, so when it gives you 3 minutes to spare, like this, you better make the best of it. <laughs> Let's start with a simple one-sided mold. And this is great for when it doesn't matter how the back of the finished piece looks. And this is a miniature shield that I'm going to make a copy of. Be careful when grabbing the blue stuff. It's quite hot and you don't want to burn your fingers. It's a good idea to use some tweezers or some other kind of tool to get the blue stuff out of the hot water. For this one-sided mold I take enough blue stuff to cover the shield piece. But since I don't want to risk pressing it straight through, I'm making it quite thick. Now put the blue stuff on the table and press the shield firmly into it. I'm pressing it deep enough so the blue stuff goes over the sides of the shield. And I'm making sure that it gets properly into it so I won't lose any details. Ok now I just wait a while for the blue stuff to cool off and return to its original temperature. If you want to speed this up you can rinse it under some cold water or pop it into your freezer. After it has cooled down, the shield is ready to be taken out. I would like to say to do it gently, but sometimes the piece can be a bit stuck and the blue stuff can usually handle being roughed up a bit, without losing shape. And here you can see how nice the mold turned out. Now it's time to fill it in. And it's possible to use different kind of products to do this like green stuff, milliput or UV resin. Now I'll be using all these three products in this mold. And that's one of the great things with blue stuff. You can even reuse the molds you make. Green stuff is just a 50-50 mix. Some preferred with a bit more blue for faster curing process, some with a bit more yellow for a softer putty. The milliput is also a 50-50 mix. I'm making sure to press the putty down properly to get it into all the nooks and crannies. Focusing on the deeper parts and where the most detail is first. Using a tool can absolutely make it easier. After some curing it's time to check on the result. And it's easy to clean off the excess putty with a hobby knife. Pretty sweet, huh? And the UV resin I just pour straight into the mold. I'm curing it with a UV torch for a few minutes when I'm happy with the amount. Since the blue stuff is quite transparent, it's easy to cure it from all sides as well. The results are not great, but apparently the resin can get warm by the chemical process. So one of the molds got heated up and it can't be reused. No bigger though. I think they all turn out great. Not much difference between the putties and the resin. It's possible to use the thermoplastic on anything you might want to copy. Even Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. <laughs> if I want I can even use the blue stuff in the blue Yo, stuff. Dog. Look, now I have an inverted mold of the shield. And I'll show you what I can do with this. Grab some milliput and do a cast on that side instead. And now I have a mold made of milliput. And why would I want to have a mold made of milliput, you ask? Well, since blue stuff gets soft when heated up, not all materials can be used in it without ruining the mold and the cast. Like with a hot glue gun, for example. Here's how it turns out if I use the hot glue gun straight on the blue stuff. And now I'll put it in the milliput mold. But first I need to use some olive oil or Vaseline in it. Otherwise I won't get the glue out in one piece. Or out at all. So if you for any reason need to make hot glue cast out of something, it works. 
But since you have to do 4 casts before the final result, some detail will be lost. So this method is best for parts that doesn't have that many details on them. Well that was easy, let's step it up a notch with a double press mold. But just before we head into that, I would just love to say thanks for watching this video. I hope it provides you with some useful information and will give you confident enough to try it out yourself. And the channel is getting close to 1000 subscribers, which is awesome. So uh, if you haven't already, just click that sub button to get us one step closer. Now let's get back to the video. I need more arms for my Terminator models from the Warhammer 40,000 game. So they all can be equipped in the right way for the right setup. And now with the double press mold, I will get the whole part molded to get a nice full copy. Once again, hot water, soak it, disco. Okay, this time I'm using a bit more blue stuff compared to the size of the model, to get a nice rim around it after it's been pressed in. I'm trying to press it in about halfway, and using a tool to get the blue stuff nice and snug around the model will make the mold better. Before letting it cool off, I'm poking some big holes around the model, that the next layer will be pressed into. And I'm pinching one of the corners a bit, making a flap, 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 flap. After it's cooled down, I slap another part of blue stuff on there, and properly press them together, making another flap on this one in the same spot, flap. Now when it's all cooled down, I'm pulling the two molds apart. This is where the flaps come in handy. You'll hopefully get it separated without it, but it does help. Even though the blue stuff is quite tricky to pull apart, there shouldn't be any need to use a release agent. Okay, now I have my molds ready, let's slap in some epoxy putty. Here I fill both molds up to the edge. I recommend not to add too much putty, but at the same time it's also better with a bit more than not enough. And before pressing the parts of with Miller put together, I just rub a little bit of water on the top of it to get them to stick to each other better. Pressing time! And a perfect fit. Make sure to give them a proper squeeze, but don't overdo it. Here you need to have a little bit of feeling. After all is cured, I'm taking the mold apart. And at first sight, it looks alright. Just like the pieces coming from the factory, they will get mold lines. These are way bigger though, and they need to be cut or carved off. But that means that at least I used enough putty for the molds. So let's clean these up. And here is the result. The green stuff cast came out okay, but I pressed the model too deep into the first mold putting the mold line very high, removing some of the details, as you can see. And it's still a little bit soft and flexible. The middle put on the other hand makes the model really hard and not flexible at all, which could end up in breaking weak parts. Oops. And it also has some gaps, which means that either I didn't add enough putty in that area, or I didn't press it evenly enough. Easily fixed with some repair putty. But there's another way to get a better pressed mold, the Lego form method. Using Lego is really handy when you want to make a custom form to fit your mold. Building the form to the size I want it, throwing in some Oyomaru, and pressing the model in. I'm taking my time to try and to get the mold snug around the model. Let it cool off for a bit. And put the top layer in. And now when I press the top layer in, I want to keep some pressure during the cooling process. Having this top piece pressed in with a clamp will do the trick. And this time I noticed that putting it in the freezer to cool off faster didn't just save me some time. It also saved me a lot of work when pulling the pieces apart. Since they kind of melt together again when reheated, you want to make the cooling time as short as possible when doing the double press mold. Here you can see how I had to struggle with a piece that didn't get any extra cooling. I used my hobby knife to get a proper grip on the two parts, but it still took quite an effort to get them separated. And I could really feel it in my fingertips afterwards. Now it's time to add some putty. I'm making a cast with both milliput and green stuff. And as before make sure to get it properly pressed down where the most details are. At this point I've skipped the tools and just used my fingers to press the putty. Using tools to get rid of some excess putty worked great though. Make sure you have enough putty to fill the two halves and put them together. And again, use the Lego lid and a clamp to get a good squeeze during the curing process. Some curing time has passed, so let's check in on the casts. Clean off the excess mold lines and voila! The result came out great! You can even see my unevenly drilled barrel holes from the original. And as no surprise, the LEGO method gave the best result. 
but the other methods work great as well. And that was all I had to cover when it comes to thermoplastic molds. If you have another way of using it, please leave a comment below. I would love to hear what more you can do with these great products. Until next time. <laughs>